The All Black Podcast is powered by our official cloud software partner, SAP, helping our teams in black become the best run teams in sport. To listen to this episode and all the All Black Podcasts, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Kira Fano, welcome to episode five of the All Black Podcast, powered by SAP. And today we're at Tapuki Rugby Club, home of the Pirates, in a special spot for our guest, Aidan Ross. Welcome to the pod, mate. Hey, mate. Good to be here. Mate, when was the last time you were here? Special spot. I know over the years you've spent a lot of time um, here at here at the Pirate Ship. But when was the last time you were here? Oh, uh, maybe a couple of months ago. Come down to one of the cold wet trainings on a Tuesday night. Um, that was quite nice. But before that. Yeah, she's been a little while. It's good to be back, though. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's a, it's a great spot. And, and firstly, mate, congrats on being named an All Black this year and making your All Black debut. Like, you're through the Irish series now. Has it has it sunk in a wee bit that, that you know, you are an All Black and, and that can never be taken away from you? Yeah, I, th- I think so. Last week, we come home for a week and we got a week off. And yeah. um, before that, it had been pretty much five straight weeks on the trot. So it, it was nice to come home, decompress a bit, and I think that's when it kind of sunk in. Yeah. Mate, it, it, it's cool. Well done, mate. Like, so good. Before we get into the guts of the interview, just a few little warm-ups so that yeah, mm. the audience can get to know you a little bit better. You don't have social, so we can't get in there, mate, and, and see what's going on on a day-to-day basis. But but firstly, can you remember the first All Black game you went to? Yep. Uh, 2009, All Blacks versus France down in Dunedin. Oh, how good. Um, old man's from, from Dunedin, so took uh, me, and my, me and my brother down there. Yep. Um, yeah, so that was my first one. Yeah, how good. Um, and then, is that, am I right in saying that's where you made your All Black debut yeah, down there as well? Yeah, yeah so oh. kind of special place. Yeah, meant to be. Um, Favourite All Black growing up, can you remember? Um, probably Tony Woodcock, yeah. um, legend, Yeah, goes about his work. And then, I don't know, maybe when I was at Intermediate in college, you know, someone I'm playing with now, Sammy Kane, he was yeah. obviously from the Bay as well, so... Yeah, those two guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to hear too, mate, because quite often props like to, you know, growing up that it was a first five or a fancy fullback or something they wanted to be, but it's good to see that, you know, Woody is someone you looked up to. And and, and Sammy as well, like he was he was at TBC as well, wasn't he, Tauranga boys like you were, and, and to sort of see a guy like that a few years ahead of you sort of cracking a bit of a path probably was a good motivator. Yeah, we actually went to Reparoa first and then kind of yeah. yeah. same as me, <laughs> Oda Modai, and then went over for the last uh, last year or so. So, um yeah, nah, it's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, what's going on? We all stream a few things these days. Mm. What are you streaming at the moment? Uh, Yellowstone, done oh, that. Yeah, so and then uh, 1883, but that was a bit slow, but uh, it's all still good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've watched both those as well. Yeah. They're bloody good shows. Yellowstone was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, f- top two things to watch ever. You binge it? Did you like smash it out yep. or were you disciplined? No, nah, went, went, <laughs> went about my business quite well and just went bang, bang, eh? Yeah, I love it. Mate, you're on the way to training. Or you're heading mm. to the gym or, or something. What's on the Spotify playlist? Um, well, if I'm in my car, just a rock. Yeah. But if on Spotify, I've actually just been put on music committee in the ABs oh. and it's a really tough time, to be fair. You're <laughs> copping a whole lot of shit. Um, so oh, there's a there's a playlist on Spotify you don't have to make yourself. It's just called Pub Classics. Oh, and yeah. uh, the back of the bus seem to like it. Yeah, brilliant. Because what is, it is almost every podcast we do like that someone has had or is going to have that duty and it's almost as nerve-wracking as, it's as playing a game of footy yourself like do yep. you just back yourself in your tunes and, and chuck them out there or do you try and sort of you know put out a selection that, that keeps the whole bus happy at different times oh it's tough because you can never win there's three yeah. of us in the committee and <laughs> whenever I get put on I'll just start playing that and then I'll I'll send a mes- message down in the back of the bus and just ask for a wee couple of requests. Yep. So you keep them happy, you keep everybody happy. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely, mate. I feel for you, buddy. I can mm. imagine that is that is hard yakka. That's tough. Right, dinner at your place. Firstly, what three people would you invite along? Uh, probably scrap the three people and just go the whole Warriors team. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, bring I them like around, eh? Yeah. Get the boys around. <laughs> keep the faith. 100%. And also, like on, um, you know, word on the street is the oil that I have is that you you, I don't know if you're good in the kitchen. That's that's not the words that were used, mm. but you like to cook. That's what those were the words that were used. So, what do you put if you're you're cooking a feed, some kai for the whole Warriors team? Yeah. 
what's on the menu? Oh, they'll probably get a choice between a scotch or a tomahawk. Yeah. And just that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just meat. Yeah, no yeah. dramas. <laughs> oh, home kill sausage goes good too. Yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah, those two things. Yeah. I, mean, I reckon the boys would love that. Oh, 100%. Eh? They would absolutely love it. Mate, f- I'm checking on on Google, Wikipedia, AllBlacks.com. They all they all collaborate and tell me that you were born in Australia. This can't be true. Is this true? Yeah, no, nah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been. Um, uh, I got three older brothers who were, who were all born there, but uh, mum and dad are both Kiwis. Yeah. Um, so went over there for a bit of work opportunity or something back in the day. Or? Yeah, went over there when they were about 19. I think they met over there. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't tell you, but. Um, I think I was eight years old when they decided to move back home um, and come back here to Tauranga and been here ever since, really. Yeah, but so you didn't know, you know, your, your introduction for rugby wasn't done in Aussie? Nah, I didn't actually even play rugby in Aussie. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a thing to me. So, because the producer here today tells me that we should be doing this this interview at Tauranga yeah. Sports, that actually your first... Yeah. Um, you know, the start of your rugby journey was not at not at Tapuki. Is this true as well? Yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> but as a I don't know, an eight year old kid, you don't get much say in life, so sure. you just do what you're told. And uh, yeah, to, uh, Total and Sports was quite, pretty close to home. I uh, grew up in Otomodai, so uh, a couple of k's between the the two places, home and the club. And then uh, yeah, I guess my senior footy out here at Tapuki. Yeah, yeah, right. And so was it? So it was Otomodai that was where you first started playing footy and, and kicking around with your mates and, and throwing the ball around? Is that where it all kicked off? Yeah, 100%. Primary, intermediate, college, probably my college, uh, year 9, 10, 11. Um, days at Oates College was probably my fondest uh, rugby memories there. Yeah. Because um, if, you're, if, you're if you're at college, obviously you can't play your club club footy. So, yeah, total my sports was under 9s through to under 13s or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, happy days. And so... Was it probably when you went, you went off to, to Tauranga Boys to TBC, and was that when you know by by that stage were you playing prop? Like were were you starting to, to make a few teams? Were you involved in the first fifteen? Was that when you started to um, you know come into your own as a footy player? Oh yeah, I think so. I had done year eleven at um, at Oats, and then uh, just made the Bay under sixteens. And then to be fair, at that stage, I was pretty ready to leave school at a <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> Got my NCAA level ones. That's all you need, I think. Yeah, um, job done. Yeah, I was, I was throwing up a few things. I think I was looking at into the army or just going off painting with the old man. Yep. And then um, we had quite a good under sixteen side that year. And um, one of my mates, uh, Dan Holland, said he was at Tapuki High School. And another guy, Lars Morris, Morris, who was at Caddy Caddy High School. And then we all kind of got together and decided to move over to Totonga Boys for our last two years. Awesome. Did year 12 there, and then year 13, I managed to do gateway for the whole year, so pretty much just paint and <laughs> play rugby. It was a good way to... Didn't get my NCAA level three, but no dramas. Mate, and that, like, because I know, um, you know, Dan's a pretty handy rugby player, and you play with him at the Steamers, I know he's overseas now. Lars Morris was, like, the, the biggest person in club yeah, rugby I've yep, ever seen yep. there for a wee while, so he was obviously decent at footy well. How did that TBC team go? There's a couple of good couple of good elements there yeah we um year 12 we had a good year and then um didn't obviously win nationals or anything actually lost to Rotorua they kicked our ass that year but year 13 2013 we bet Rotorua twice on their home field that hadn't been done for for a long time I'm not even sure if that would have been done since would it no I don't think so I think they've had a draw since potentially but um yeah that that was a that was a pretty big thing yeah and what about Hamilton boys? Did you knock them over? Because they're always top of the tree as well with, with secondary yeah. school rugby, aren't they? No, nah, I've got <laughs> only like a couple of regrets in my footy career. And that's probably one of them. We Year 13, we had three cracks at them and couldn't get over the line. And, and bloody Gats, senior Gats and junior Gats still remind me at the Chiefs every day about how they they would beat us every single time. It's just, it, honestly, it bugs me. Because you've got Quinn 2 calling it the factory. and Quinn 2 pie. Yeah, yeah. It's just, honestly, it's run their mouths. And, <laughs> but the thing is, like, I can't do anything about it anymore because yeah, we've had our gone. shot. But, yeah, that's probably up there one of the biggest regrets. Mate, it's awesome, isn't it? Like, even all the things you've achieved since and, and the same with those other guys like Quinn and, and like Gaddy and, and stuff that you still reflect on those moments, those high school moments and stuff. Like, it's still very much 
um, in the memory, isn't it? Oh, 100%. I, <laughs> I know the second time we played them in year 13, we lost them by one point. And oh. I was like, oh. And then I think the third time it was to go through to um, top four and yep. they kicked our ass on TV. Ugh, that's what it is, but <laughs> yeah, still bugs me. Yeah, but I mean, that's probably a, a beautiful thing as well of when you make the steamers and then when you go on and make the Chiefs, these guys who used to go hammer and tongs with and butt heads with, and, yep. and I'm sure there's great banter, it sounds like there yep. is, but you come together as a team and you've kind of, you've probably got that bond a little bit, haven't you, from the high school days, which is, is something that everyone's so passionate about. Yeah, well, we all played for our teams growing up um, and, and now we're teammates, so it's quite cool and probably like the best thing about going to footy each day is the banter. You can just give each other shit and as long as you don't take it personally, yeah. you can just ram it home, hey. There's, yeah. some, there's some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the best one of the best things about a rugby environment, isn't it, is that sort of yeah. friendly banter and that camaraderie that you can have within those environments, which you need because you're with each other every day. You can't be, oh, like, you absolutely. Know, um, deadly serious for yeah. every minute of every session. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, Night tie, you, you got to tell him it's banter at the Chiefs, otherwise he takes it personally. And you just got to remember, it's not personal, you know? Just take it on the chin. Who would be the biggest pest in the Chiefs, you know? Like, who's someone who likes to, to give it but can't take it? Or, or who's a good one to poke? Night tie is definitely up there. He just, oh, he, he's, I think, he was with the Steamers last year, didn't play because um, he was injured. And then um, he was already captain on the weekend and you just haven't heard, he hasn't stopped talking about it for the last six days. First game captain. <laughs> just, oh, he just loves poking the lads, eh? Yep. Let everyone know he's there. Yeah, nah, mate, it's good stuff. And I know, like, you know, from TBC, you went into the academy and, and I think sometimes there's a perception that, oh, that a young fella's in an academy and it means he goes and pumps some tin and kicks a few balls and, and maybe does one uni paper. But, yeah. like, for you, um, you know, with... Your old man being a pa painter and your family painting, like you literally were doing your training at, you know, I mean, even talk us through a day for you when you were back in the academy. Yeah, oh, I wasn't going to uni. Yeah, you couldn't pay me to go to uni. <laughs> <laughs> I had any guts for a school by pen yeah. and paper by. Enough of the learning, eh? Oh, Enough of the learning. 100%, honestly. <laughs> the amount that go to uni now and then just <laughs> out the door in a couple of years or yeah. they finish their uni and then they're not even doing their their job that they um they practice at uni with. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Oh, Put my was, hand out there. Yeah. Might as well just go and got a tray day. Eh? <laughs> yeah. No dramas. But um oh they were they were big days. Like we used to get pumped. Yeah. Um It'd be a, it was a five five thirty start, wasn't it? Like, oh, I was in in the gym at six o'clock. So for me it was getting up at about five um and then sorting myself out for the day, getting into the into the gym um for six and then do that session and then in the car, off to work for seven, seven thirty to start, and I think my brekkie back then was just like can of cream rice and a can <laughs> yeah. of peaches all mixed together. Yeah, 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 and then yeah on the tools, and then I used to get half an hour for lunch, and I'd, I'd shut my eyes in to try and get some rest, and then um yeah, and then you usually had an afternoon session start at you know five thirty six. Um, you know, you weren't getting home to 8.39 at Sometimes night. Sometimes club training in the mud yeah, and the dark and, and rits and repeat. Yeah, and we had an awesome coach that just loved thrashing us back then too. Clayton, <laughs> he'd come into the bay and he would always love a night session whenever you weren't at club, Monday and Wednesday. And they, yeah, some of them were pretty brutal. Mate, and because the old man was a painter and has been for a long time and you did... Um, you know, some decent stints on the brush, like, yeah. are you any good? Like, would I would I contract you? Would I hire you if we had to do, oh. you know, a reno or something? Would I get you in? Like, what are your tips? Oh, I'd go well. You, you could <laughs> ask to, but I probably couldn't be bothered at the moment on the, yeah. on the brushes. Um, yeah. Probably, I'm, more, I'm, I'm probably better on the ro roller than the brush, eh? Sure. Like my eye-to-hand coordination, just getting that steady line, could yeah. be a little bit dusty. Right. But roller, um, you give me a Bang large on. amount of space and I'll just pump it out. You'll go for it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. really efficient and... Yeah, and like I've, I think I've heard you say before, like don't don't skimp on the paint tape. Nah, like, layer it on. Nah, chuck it on, eh? Yeah. Oh, chuck it on, like <laughs> honestly, clients paying for the paint, so you might yeah. as well use it. And I was watching the block last night, and there was this, a guy on, and he was trying to actually give painting tips, and he reckons finished rolling up. I looked at that, and I like, always finished rolling down. If you had to watch last night's block episode, it actually yeah. pissed me off. Mate, he had no idea what he's talking about. Well, that's it. If you take one thing out of this episode, yeah. finish down. Yeah, Is that it? finish down. Yeah, Absolutely, finish down. mate. That's gold. But in all seriousness, um, that those are big days, mate. Like th yeah. those are big days, and you're obviously pretty motivated because I know, you know, you're you're a mobile prop. You're a little bit lighter, so you're probably trying to put as much weight on as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but surely, as well, 
where does that work ethic come from? Like, where does that a bit? I know the, a lot of the boys call you horse, and there can be a lot of different reasons for that. But like, part of it is, <laughs> you know, because because you go to work, mate. Because you're a yeah, workhorse. Like, that, where does that right. come from? I have no idea. Oh, I, I do have an idea. I think I just started calling everybody horse, and then it just <laughs> caught on. And then um, some lads take the piss and just give it back to me as pony. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, no in particular reason. Just yeah, I think it's everyone started calling each other horses at some stage. It's a good name. Yeah, but but I think too, I suppose the question is, you know, now you're in, you know, you've been fortunate enough, and it's because you hard work to get into professional environments. You know, yeah. rugby's your job. How good? You yeah. know, now you're in All Black. How good? But like, was it those those long days? You know, like chipping away sort of makes it even a little bit more special because you've, you know, you've come from come from a place where you weren't earning much at all, yeah. you know, through through footy and, and like you say, doing some serious mahi to now come out the other side. It's got to be pretty cool and pretty rewarding when you look back at that journey and those times when you're falling asleep and yeah. getting up early and eating on the fly are sort of all worth it. Oh, 100%. It's so rewarding, especially I think those days um, made me get to where I am too. It's yeah. just back then it just drove discipline and just uh, work ethic um, into me. Um, yeah, like I'd never. If I had my time again, I'd, I'd go for it again to, yeah. to get to the spot. Yeah, mate, that's awesome. And like we're here at Tapuki, and, it, and it's a good spot. Um, it's a it's a passionate club and community that that supports this place. And one thing I always thought about um, is actually for a, for a, props are pretty gnarly position sometimes. Not particularly as a young prop, but you know, if, even if you you probably maybe thought in the early days you're a lighter prop, and you, and one of the things is really mobile and, and skillful and, and a big motor, but wanting to put on weight, yeah. it's a hell of a place to learn how to be a prop in club rugby, isn't it? Like, you, I'm sure you came up against some pretty grisly old characters from, you know, here in Tauranga, Rotorua, Central, but, you know, you're all around the yep. shop, and I'm sure there's some, some a few uh, a few customers trying to teach you in the dark arts. Oh, 100%. And I was pretty fortunate that I didn't, I guess, crack the professional game straight out of high school. You know, yeah. I, I come and played three or four seasons here at Tapuki, and uh, I got to experience, you know, the, the club life um, at a at a club rugby side. I guess now, you know, there's a lot of young um, players that are going from college straight into super environments where um, they probably don't get to do a whole club campaign or a season. And, and it's pretty pretty cool because, like, you know, it's more the stuff off the field as well. Yeah. You enjoy the, the change rooms afterwards and the club rooms afterwards, like... You know, a lot of times you weren't even going to town as a young lad here. You're just staying in the club rooms to yeah. 2 a.m. in the morning, and not because you sometimes wanted to, but because you were forced to by the old heads. You know, you <laughs> yeah. weren't leaving. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then on the field as well, there's, like you said, it was a pretty awesome place to learn my trade, especially um, my first year here. Matty Wallace had just come back to the bay from Northland, and he's a good prop, Matty, isn't he? And he's played couple of hundred games yep. for Tapuki and, and is considered a, a really good prop, isn't he? Yeah, played for the Bay when he was real young and then took his career up to Northland. Yep. Um, and I think the year I was trying to make New Zealand 20s, he took me under his wing and we trained together, gym together. And we just, the, honestly, the amount of one-on-one -on -one scrums we did together <laughs> were countless and it was just and again and again. And he, I put my... A lot of where I am today, down to him for putting that time into me um, as a young kid. Mate, how good is that? And that's that's the connection to the grassroots and the community, isn't it? That yep. you know this club's a big part of of your journey, and that someone was prepared for free, you yep. know, to to put their time and energy into into you, and and probably he's probably really proud to to see you go on and and become an All Black. That's that's pretty cool for Maddie in this club, isn't it? Oh, it's pretty special. It's awesome to see. I think he, he's probably about 40 years old now and he's just <laughs> play, he was still playing a pre-season game yeah. for the Bay last weekend, you know, so yeah. it, it's pretty special for him, yeah. I don't think he's got any worse in 15 years, has he? He's still an absolute beast of a scrummager, a pest over the ball. Like, he's he's yeah. a bit of a legend around here, isn't he? Oh, he goes well, eh? He goes real well. <laughs> Hopefully give me a job on the building site once I finish rugby. Cheers, uh, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, for the... You know, you played a lot of pro footy. Like, you're in there. You know, you did really well under 20 steamers, chiefs, you know, and, and ticked all those boxes pretty early doors. Like, what sticks out is some of the great memories through that time. I know you've hopefully got more memories to make in those jerseys yep, and I yep. know you're a really proud steamer and a really proud chief but you know uh, to date you know what have been the highlights um, obviously a couple of weeks ago um, Tabum for the All Blacks that, that, that was really special Yeah. Um, but probably before that Tabum for the steamers yep. um, as a when I was 22 it was a cold wet <laughs> night down in uh, down in Tasman uh, we got pumped by them 
but um, but like the ABs kind of lost the first game, but just so proud afterwards. I guess yeah. a team growing up here, and you know, when I was younger, it was never to be an All Black or a Chief. It was just to be a to be a steamer. Yeah. And back when uh, I think 2004, when they won the Shield, when they yes. um, defended it at Bay Blue Chip Stadium back then, I think it was. It was massive crowds and Hori Bot was around and yeah. I just grew up watching the steamers and that's when I was younger that's all, all I ever wanted to be really. Yeah. And you're making obviously some some bloody good decisions on the field and all that, but there's there's a lot of oil out there that off the field you're making some interesting financial decisions. Like there's the the, the two seater Ute that yeah. you bought as a twenty year old. Like is is that still seen as a good investment? Yeah, done me good, <laughs> hey. Done me really good for I don't know, maybe four or five years. I had a little Subaru before that and when I was painting two seaters quite you know like yeah, you're not giving the selfish a, a hu- it is selfish you know yeah. especially when you know in those um, mm. club and, and underage environments where the lads all need a ride like it's yeah that's that's pretty narrow it is selfish so I mean <laughs> I could always grab a ride with somebody else yeah. so yeah. That, that was good and I mean you didn't have to talk to many people yeah. either because they didn't have yeah. the electric windows they had the rolly down ones and so on the other side couldn't reach over yeah um, you probably just put someone like Jug Jeff Waits in there and then be minimal yep. word count oh. on that trip I'd imagine yeah zero chat for <laughs> both of us to be fair plenty of room in the in the tray though had a hard hard top cover that was, that was pretty cool yeah oh honestly getting over the calm eyes it was that nice to drive so <laughs> oh, if, yeah maybe you have to look into getting one again eh? they, yep. they were nice nice yeah and, and what about some of the other life admin like what sort of nick was the flat in like who, who was mm. you know like was it was it tidy like uh, were you was your passion for cooking was that there as well, and yep. you were running the kitchen. Like, what sort of what sort of um, yeah. Yeah, when I was own. eighteen, there was definitely no passion for cooking in that <laughs> flat. Oh, it was a horrible flat, but I loved it. Eh? It was just so grotty and messy, but it was just so nice at the same time. Like the sure, house, it was never, It was called the PM. Um, I think we had to pay fifty bucks a week rent. Whether that got paid or not, I still I can't remember. But it never had lock. The house couldn't lock. Who was um, in there with you? Me, uh, Dan Holland, Zed. We were like the two mainstays for a good two, three years, but then we yeah. had people that come and go for a year here and there. Uh, Thruppy, Alex Thrupp from Matter yeah. Matter. Um, um, Leroy Van Dan did a, yeah. did a shift <laughs> in there. John O'Kitto, he really tried to rein us in there to <laughs> try and bring some, probably just a bit of flat respect and sure. decorum. Yeah. Didn't work out. Um, Troy Callender, um, <laughs> yes. he's in Japan now. But it's um, it's sort of you know it's it's good yarns, but also it's got to be pretty cool. Like when you go off and play with the steamers, you're effectively playing with your mates, aren't you? You know, and you did yep. off, and you know you you made promotion as well. Like you got to look back on on those memories with people like Dan, who are who are a really good mate, and and um, it's almost it's only just above grassroots in some ways, isn't it? It's, it's playing footy with your mates just for a little bit of cash as well. Like they've got to be fond memories. Oh, 100%. You're not playing. Um back then might attend but Bunnings Cup to, to be financially secure it's yeah. it's because you're, you're playing because you, you love the place you're, the jersey you're wearing and it's with your mates and it's it's a pretty cool time of the year yeah. mate with the ABs like as we said at the start made the ABs made your ABs all black debut this year which is awesome like you know I suppose your sort of name's been bandied around maybe for a couple of seasons there's a couple of times you had a false start with injury like this year when the squad was named like did you get a heads up were you or did you just listen like everyone else and were you with family and friends like you know how'd that all unravel for you yeah so through the um super season this year i hadn't had any chat with the ab's coaches so um you know i was just doing my thing playing footy for the chiefs trying to do my best part to try and try and win a title you know um and obviously we fell short there at the end in the semi-final but I don't tend to read too many articles, but you know, your good mates are sending you articles when your name's getting floated around a little bit. Um, and then yeah, I was just like everybody else, just on announcement day, um, yeah. found out at the same time as you probably. And from there, yeah, it was, it was pretty. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was special, but it was pretty all go away. Yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. Um, it's sure a big old day. Yeah, I, I was going to say like, um, what were first impressions is the environment because we talk to a lot of guys and, and like you say you hit the ground running don't you like yep. you're in there and you're into it like what was it like for you i think the trainer asked me after the first or second camp and they're like how are you finding it uh, what do you think of the environment and i th- the best way to sum it up i reckon is just there's nothing more that they could do to better 
prepare yourself for yep. a week for a day for a game like it's all there on tap the the resources they have yep. um it, it's world class 10 out of 10 environment and like who's um you know who they room you with do they put you in with an old dog to show you the ropes or do they put a couple <sighs> yeah. of young fellas in there to or you know like what what was the setup there and and you were you pulling your weight you know yeah no they've definitely got a setup because i'm <laughs> I'm obviously still the new kid, but I'm a little bit over it, eh? I think you got to, you got to go through all the leaders. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had Nuggy, Whitelock, Colsey. Um, oh, all the old dogs, yeah. Uh, Scooter last week. Like, I'm not complaining a bit. Yeah, but, like, it's just, I'm 27. I don't really need to be baby day. Eh? I'm, I'm going to turn yeah. up on time, and if I need to ask a question, I'm going to ask a question. So yeah. they want to change the rooming list, and, yeah. you know, I'm... Um, Get You've me, done get, your time. Get me out of the old souls. Um, yeah. I'm available for that. Yeah, yeah, classic. How yeah, good. And also, mate, second test down and done is you made your debut. Like, like how good and, and sort of who gives you the, the heads up during the week that that's going to be the case and, and how do you get your jersey and what's the process there because that's pretty special. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a real special week. I, you know, getting named in the squad was pretty awesome, but to hear your name get out in a uh, read out in a 23, that that was when it really hit home, sunk home. And yeah, we're in Dunners. I think we we're training at the university fields. It was and it was a Tuesday training, Tuesday morning. They always named the team before that training, and it was cold. It was so cold. The grass still had white bits on it. Yeah, it was freezing. And uh, we we're all crammed in the changing room. And no contract at the Highlanders coming up. Nah, nah. I'll be staying, staying north. And uh, Shandy comes in, reads out the team, and yeah, number seventeen read out my name. And that, that, yeah, from that moment, that, that was pretty special. And then all the boys get around you. Yeah. Um, and then you got to go train. But it was definitely a a pretty awesome buzz in my stride of that training. It was exciting. Absolutely, and I know the game was was hectic. Like it was, yeah. it was one of the most well bizarre rugby games actually, to be honest. That you know I'd watched in a long time, but but I know also as well, heaps of family and friends came down to Dunners. Like you say, the place where you first watched the All Blacks, and now where the place where you first played. Yeah. Like in reflection, like how good, like to be able to make your All Black debut in front of all these people that have been a part of your journey that had that had yeah. helped you along the way, and and I know. Well, to drop the game would be hugely disappointing. Yeah. You know, to, to probably still be able to, um, you know, have that moment with them is pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, like the result was a result. At the end of it, like couldn't care less. Like I debuted yeah. for the All Blacks, you know, and that's most kids' dreams in this country. And yeah. to be able to do that, I was just buzzing inside, eh? And to have friends and family um, partner there, oh, it was. It was pretty special. Mate, you've had you've had your first series under the belt and, and as we already said, you know, not the outcome the team wanted. But like what's your reflections on the series now that you've you've got that under the belt? You've had a, a little bit of time to kind of look back on it, not quite in the madness of, of you know, those first weeks getting ready to be in the All Blacks for the first time. Like yeah. looking back, was it awesome? You know, what you know, what was what was the reflections for you now you had a bit of time to digest? Oh, it was awesome, um, being a part of it, being being involved with it. Um you know, being a member of the squad, um, feeling real included. And obviously it wasn't the series we wanted it to be. I don't think anyone did, but at the end of the day, you know, we didn't go out there and try to, yeah. you know, lose. You know, everyone's trying their guts out out there. And I think, you know, and tomorrow we head to Africa and we get another opportunity to, um, uh, you know, start another campaign. And I know how tight the group is internally. Um, and I think, you know, externally just, you know, everyone's got their bit to say, but I guess it just shows how much, I guess, passion and pride and how everyone cares yep. for, for for the for the All Blacks team because um, they're obviously talking about it, you know. So, But, yeah, we're tired and we'll get to Africa and get tied over there and um, it's a pretty exciting opportunity. And, you know, it can almost galvanise us what's coming up. Well, absolutely, mate. Like, I think you're right. You hit the nail on the head in terms of, like, that passion is just something you can channel, isn't it? Like the passion yeah. of the fans and the opinion that they have is just something you can channel. And, and while there's been, look, there's been some change. Like you can't hide away from that. We're a couple of new coaches. Um, so we've lost a couple of coaches, got a new one. But, you know, maybe on a massive upside for you, um, one of the new coaches, Jace Ryan, is a scrum specialist. You know, like he's not just a Fords coach, but he's a guy who's absolutely cut his teeth in the dark arts of the scrum. And, and that's what you do, mate. So hopefully, I'm sure you've had a little bit of time with him this week. And, and you know, hopefully that's something that really benefit you over the rest yeah. of the season because while Jace is here as a Fords coach, you know, he, he absolutely is a scrum expert, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. He's good at what he does too. In my New Zealand 20s year, he was a scrum coach back then too. So, 
you know, he's been on a hell of a journey too and yeah. he's got to where he's obviously wanted to get to too. So big ups to, to him and, um, you know, he'll do a fantastic job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he doesn't even look like a prop, mate, does he? Yeah, he's like... <laughs> like a he's got ears like you. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, lastly, our partners at SAP pride themselves on powering the best run team. So we're asking Aidan today to help identify success factors on and off the pitch. And I think, mate, um, you know, in your time in rugby, is there any common factors for success that stand out? Yeah, oh, I reckon there's a couple. Maybe when you're younger on, especially at high school, you know, the talented, that pure natural talent kids, you know, really thrive and shine. Yeah. Especially now with school rugby getting televised. Yep. Um, and then I find once you leave school, it's the ones that have just got that hard-working, um, driven work ethic that, that come through. Um, and then, yeah, so it, if you want to play the long game, you, you definitely need a. you know, everyone's got talent. Some obviously got a lot more talent than others. Um, but if you've got that, that work ethic, it, it goes a long way. Mate, for you to continue and grow, like what's been your philosophy? Is it working on the strengths? Is it working on the weaknesses? Is it being organised? Is it ticking boxes? Like, what's your approach? It's. I think the biggest thing is when you get criticism or feedback, you know, you don't take it personally, you take it on the chin and, you know, it's been given to you for a reason. So it's up to you whether um, you want to do something about it or not. So it's, you, you know, you're never the finished product. You, you always need to keep growing your game, working on aspects of it. So it's... It's, yeah, it's just never been, I guess, happy uh, at where you are. It's, you, you want to keep moving forward. Mate, so good. Mate, good luck. I know you're on the plane tomorrow. And, like, um, what another really exciting chapter in your rugby mm. story, like going to play two tests against Africa and Africa. Like, that's sort of stuff people like me that dream about, you know, yep. like to be able to go over there. And, and I know you're gonna, you and the boys are going to give it 100 to mate. So, so good luck, and I look forward to watching those games. Thanks for joining us today, brother. No, cheers, mate. Thank you very much for having me. No worries. The All Blacks podcast is powered by our official cloud software partner, SAP, helping our teams in black be the best run in sports. Hosted by Rob Dunn in the Hargrave Street Studio. Produced by Carl Thompson from Blue and Ginge, the podcast producers. Video editing by Mac Leesberg, graphics by Western Design, content advising from Andy Burt, and commercial manager for the podcast is Valeska Hoth. Follow the All Blacks podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere you get your podcasts.